Well, greetings, everyone. Once again, this is Israel Hawkins coming to you from the house of Yahweh, and this is the Prophetic Word Program. Uh, the the uh, uh, world is in a mess, as the Pope says. We're facing crisis, as the many of them, many, and and of course, uh, the, there's no answers. They have no answers, and of course, the uh, Scripture shows that that uh, the reason for it is that the Pope has done away with the laws. The Catholic, Roman Catholic Church, the fourth beast, uh, shown in Daniel, uh, which every scholar knows is the Roman Catholic Church, the great Roman Empire uh, that was uh, started in, uh, in uh, Jerusalem, Israel, uh, by the uh, uh, Pharisees, Sadducees, Essenes, and Herodians that was prophesied in Daniel to... Uh, to uh, that the army would uh, would uh, serve on their part. That is these four religions that they uprooted and uh, and of course transplanted to Rome, and uh, they destroyed the temple, moved the artifacts to Rome. I know that seems like a big surprise to most people, but call us, write us, email us. We'll send you the absolute proof. The Roman army they got their orders from the chief priest. There's no doubt who owned the Roman army. In fact, uh, Acts, the seventh chapter, shows that Paul, he was a Roman soldier. His name was Shao, but they changed it to Paul. But he was a Roman soldier, and uh, he got his orders uh, straight from the chief priests of the Pharisees, the Sadducees, Essenes, Herodians. The four religions there were ruling in the temple by force, not by... Yahweh. No, they, they killed the ones who taught Yahweh's laws. They killed the Savior who taught Yahweh's laws. In fact, that's how, why they hated him. If you look at John, uh, the 15th chapter, if I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have their sins revealed. Well, what is sin? Sin is the breaking of Yahweh's laws. Let, let me turn there quickly and read that to you. Um, uh, in in First John, that's uh, just before you get to Revelations. It's uh, uh, First, Second, and Third John, and uh, of course, uh, then you have uh, Jude and Revelations after that. But First uh, John three, here's what sin is. If you'll get if you'll get this in your mind, and you always remember what sin is. First John three verse four: Whosoever commits sin Transgress is also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. That's a fact. That's what sin is. Now look at verse 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous. Verse 8 says, He who commits sin, sin is the opposite of righteousness. Whoever commits sin breaks the law. So righteousness is the keeping of the law. Now look at verse 8. He who commits sin is of the devil. Well, where, <laughs> who does the Pope belong to? The Pope does away with all the laws. He says, he says, in fact, he's denying the laws now. He's come out in the open. I've forced him to because I've been bringing out his sin. And he says them laws are written by man. yes. The Bible itself says that. And men inspired by Yahweh. But where could you get better laws to teach your children than, than those that say, do not steal, do not bear false witness, uh, don't commit fornication, don't commit adultery. Remember the Sabbath day to come to services, to, to uh, uh, gather yourselves together with Yahweh and Yahweh's appointed appointed time, Yahweh's appointed feast, and so forth. What better laws could you get to teach your children than that? Why would you want to do away with those laws? The Savior said it. You love darkness rather than light because your deeds are evil. And that's exactly why you're practicing breaking the laws of Yahweh. Well, here he says plainly, you belong to Satan the devil. Write this down and read it for yourself in your own Bible. 1 John 3, verses 4, Whosoever commits sin transgresses the law. 
So keeping the law is righteousness. The Savior said in, ver in uh, Matthew 6, 33, He says, Seek first the kingdom of Yahweh and His righteousness. His righteousness is keeping the law. 1 John 3, verse 7, Little children, let no man deceive you. Well, the Pope is trying to deceive you by saying, Those laws, we don't want those laws. They were written by man. We don't believe in creation. What does the man live by? What else is there besides the Holy Scriptures? There's nothing that offers man life except the Holy Scriptures. If he does away with this, he does away with your faith totally, your belief totally. That's the reason that the Catholic Church took the book of Yahweh, and that's what it was called. Look, up, look it up for yourself. It's in Isaiah 34, verse 16. Search out the book of Yahweh and read. Now, they uh, translated that book of the Lord. They took out the name Yahweh as uh, Uremia 23, verse 26 and 27 said. They removed the name and caused the people to forget my name for Lord. We have the history of that. By the way, the Catholic Church admits that they removed the name Yahweh and Yahshua, Yahshua Messiah, Yahshua is the Savior, and they replaced the name uh, Yahweh with the words Lord and God. They replaced the name Yahshua with Jesus and Christ, which comes from Jesus and Christos, two gods. And that was Constantine did that. Constantine chose those names of course, and said, this is the God you're going to worship because the religions were fighting in Rome uh, big time. Uh, they were fighting one another, creating wars in Rome. So Constantine made it a death penalty to worship any other gods except the ones he named. Well, in, in uh, 1 John 3 now, he says, whosoever commits sin, sin is the transgression of the law. The laws of Yahweh, the Ten Commandments. Read the Ten Commandments. You can't find more beautiful laws than to, than to teach your children. <laughs> than those Ten Commandments. Why would they do this? Because they are followers of Satan. Look at it for yourself. Little children, let no man deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous. But, verse 8, he who commits sin, he who practices sin, is of the devil. And verse 10 says, In this way the children of Yahweh and the children of the devil are made manifest. Yes, the people that follow the Pope, the people that follow the people who teach the laws of Yahweh are done away with, are just teaching you to commit sin. Now, in these last days... Yahweh said there'd be two witnesses that would actually teach that teach the laws of Yahweh. They say, with these religions, they say, well, uh, the, the disciples, they did away with it. The Savior said, don't even think that I've come to do away with the law. That, that is, uh, uh, look at this for yourself, because there's, there's accusing him of doing away with the law. But he said in chapter 19 and verse 17, but he said unto them, Why do you question me about righteousness? There is only one who is the standard of perfection, and that is Yahweh. If you would enter into life, keep the commandments. If you would enter into life, keep the commandments. He also says in chapter 5 and verse 17, Do not even think that I have come to destroy the law. Because they, wanted to, they, they were trying to say that the Savior did away with the law. The Savior came teaching the laws of Yahweh. That's a fact. And in, in chapter 15 of John, in verse 22, he said, If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have their sins revealed. He was te teaching the laws of Yahweh and revealing their sins. And notice, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He who hates me hates my father also. And then he, he said, don't be surprised if the world hates you. They, they will. You start using the name Yahweh, the Creator, 
and a frown will come on their face. You start keeping the commandments of Yahweh and that makes it even worse. And hatred will start growing for you as, this, as uh, the scriptures show they will. In 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, he said, don't be surprised if the world hates you. And the Savior said, told his disciples the same thing. Here, and they, they said, well, the, the Apostle Paul, he hinted that the laws were done away with. He hinted? He said plainly here in 1st Corinthians. This is a, this is a letter to the, to the Corinthians in the days written by the Apostle Shaul, or the Paul, as they uh, called him in the King James Version. 6 and verse 9. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh? Now notice what he says. The people, he says, are unrighteous here. Do not deceive yourselves, neither fornicators nor God-worshippers. God-worshippers? If you, if you look at uh, Genesis 3, verse 5, Satan says, You will not surely die. This is the desirable way. And you will know that you be like the evil gods, she said. Verse 5, evil like the gods. Here you see this same thing, and the apostle shall oh, warning you that God were, Yahweh was never a god. He was the creator. He was the heavenly father. Uh, the Savior said when you pray, uh, pray our father which is in heaven, whose name is Yahweh. Yes, his name is Yahweh. The 23rd Psalm says, Yahweh is my shepherd. They changed that, took his name out, put Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. If you have it in a linear, you can see it, it puts the name back in there. The in a linear shows the name and where it goes. And he says, Yahweh is my shepherd. And the last verse, verse 6 says, I will dwell in the house of Yahweh forever. They took that out, took his name out, and changed it to Lord. And the 23rd Psalm in the King James Version says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Well, there's a big difference in Lord and Yahweh. The word Lord comes from dead rabbis. Before that, it came from dead pharaohs. If you, look at, if you look up the word Lord uh, or Rabbi in, uh, in Unger's Bible Dictionary, it will tell you that this is where the word Lord came from. Before that, it came from, from the Pharaohs who died and they made them lords and gods. The top, the top one was the Lord. <laughs> Their top, the most well-respected, was called the Lord. Well, here... He says that the Apostle Paul, who they claimed did away with the laws, he didn't do away with the laws. Read it for yourself in your own Bible. Do you not know that the unrighteous, remember 1 John 3, don't let any man deceive you. He who practices righteous, righteousness is righteous. 1 John 3, 4 says sin is the breaking of the law. Well, here the Apostle Paul says... Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom? No, the Pope won't inherit the kingdom. In fact, he won't even be there unless he repents. And that's a scriptural fact. Hey, what's he basing his faith on? If he doesn't, if he wants to do away with the Holy Scriptures, which he says he doesn't believe in, in creation in seven days, that's what the scripture says. Read it for yourself in the beginning. The Savior said you're a fool if you don't believe all that the prophets have spoken. That's Luke 20, 24, verse 25. He says he doesn't believe it. He's, uh, so he's classified as a fool. He's classified as belonging to Satan, the devil. That's what 1 John 3, 7 and 8 says. Write it down, please, and read it for yourself. Any preacher who's preaching to you and tells you the laws of Yahweh are done away with, they're fitting right into this bill here. They belong to Satan the devil. They don't belong to Yahweh at all. And they, there's no salvation for them at all. In 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9, notice carefully in your own Bible, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh? 
Do not deceive yourselves, neither fornicators, nor God worshipers. God worshipers. You know, uh, uh, Romans 6.16 says, You belong to whom you obey. Let me read that to you. That is very important. Uh, right after Acts, Romans 6. I'll turn back to Corinthians here. Romans 6.16 Do you not know that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin... Sin is the breaking of Yahweh's law, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. Obedience, which leads to keeping the laws of Yahweh. But thank Yahweh, though you were once servants of sin, you have become obedient, obedient to the laws, with your heart, to the form of teaching which was delivered unto you. Acts 3.19 says, Repent and be converted that your sins might be wiped out. They're not wiped out until you repent and convert to practicing Yahweh's laws. That is a scriptural fact. Well, here now, back to 1 Corinthians 6.9. 6, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor God worshipers, nor adulterers, nor men who commit sexual perversion with boys. Nora MacDonald, in this interview just recently, just a few days ago, Nora MacDonald, why aren't the bishops being prosecuted for child abuse, for sodomizing all these children. And the cardinal she was interviewing, who is very close to Pope Francis, said, well, you'll have to ask the Pope. The Pope says, who am I to judge these sodomites? Who am I to judge these sodomites? You don't have to judge them. The judgment is here for you, right here. No sodomite is going to make it into Yahweh's kingdom. You read verse chapter 20 of Revelation, and you'll find out that there is a fire waiting those sodomites who will not repent. And unless they repent and start practicing the laws of Yahweh, that fire will be waiting for you. And you will be burned up leaving you neither root nor branch. That's what it said. Worshippers of gods, nor adulterers, nor men who commit sexual perversion with boys, nor men who commit sexual perversion with other men, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, will inherit the kingdom of Yahweh. That's a scriptural fact. Well, who will inherit the kingdom of Yahweh? Go over to Revelations and look at the words of the Savior. The Savior himself doing the talking. In Revelations, the very last chapter of Revelations 22, verse 12, And behold, I come quickly, that's the Savior doing the speaking. My reward is with me to give every man according to for his works, <laughs> judged according to his works. I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those that keep his laws. Blessed are those that keep his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Outside are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and worshipers of gods and everyone who professes to love, yet practices breaking the law. I, Yahshua, Messiah, have sent my Moloch to testify to you these things. That's the very last chapter in your Bible, starting with verse 12. Well, back here to, to Corinthians. Here's your judgments. Here is your judgments right here, already set in place for you. Revelations 22 is another judgment. Matthew 19, 17, if you would enter into life, you won't have eternal life unless you keep the commandments of Yahweh. 
You can lie all you want to and be lied to by Satan all you want to, but don't let any man deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous. Well, the world is a mess right now just because of this. Because they've transgressed the laws, broken the covenants. Read this in Isaiah 24. The earth mourns and fades away. Verse 24, verse 4. The world mourns and fades away. Right now, the earth is defiled. The seas are defiled. Yes, they're finding bacteria in the sea that's killing the coral reef, but also death throughout the oceans now. Yes, and it's not being killed by oil. No, it's being killed by bacteria from STDs that was created by STDs, which was created by sodomy, which was created by fornication, adultery, and bestiality. Yes, these STDs were created by mankind. Yahweh didn't create them. No, you created them by your sexual acts. And now you're mutating and mutating and mutating these diseases. They've become incurable. Everyone is born sick now. Everyone, every baby is born sick now. Every child has a defect. Many, some of them have many defects. You've created these diseases, and Yahweh says they've even entered the, the heavens. The heavens, that's the atmosphere. They're causing drought and famine, causing global warming even. Yes, these things are the, the cause of this. The earth mourns and fades away. The world mourns and fades away. The earth is defiled by the inhabitants of it. Why? Why? Look at that for yourself. Why is the earth so defiled? Why is the heavens defiled? Why is Revelations 18 saying, Come out of her, my people. Be not a part of their sins, so you won't accept their cursing. Write that down, Revelations 18, and read it. It shows there that Rome is going to be burned, that city that sits on seven hills. Chapter 17 shows you that that great city that reigns over the kings of the earth that's, uh, that's, and sits on seven hills. Look up the seven hills of Rome and you'll see. It identifies it. Revelation 17 and 18 shows you this. I lie not. I'm Yahweh's last day's witness. Yahweh shows that his two witnesses will come against sin. They will preach the laws of Yahweh. They will bring forth the way of Yahweh. And after, after mankind has proved by darkening the sun and killing four-fifths of the earth's population, Yahweh's laws will stand. And they will stop war. You will learn war no more. Yes, that's what Isaiah 2 uh, shows. Isaiah 2 and Michael 4. Micah, or Micaiah 4, shows what the house of Yahweh that Yahweh will create in these last days is going to do. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants of it because they have transgressed the laws. Well, the Pope has done away with the laws. He says, no, no. We want, uh, the gods will forgive us. We'll be evil like the gods. The same thing that Eve did in Genesis 3, 5. Be evil like the gods. Well, in Micaiah, or Micah, if you have a uh, King James Version, Yahweh actually shows that in the last days, the, genera the Savior said that means the last generation. The last generation, the last days means the last generation. We're in the last generation. I was born in 1934. I was raised up on studying the Scriptures. The prophecies, I, I became, I just literally loved the prophecies because it foretells the future. And I said, this is a stronger power than mankind. No mankind, none of mankind, no one has that power except Yahweh. And in Isaiah 44, he shows that, 44 and 45. Isaiah, the prophet of Yahweh, says that they will know from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same by my two witnesses that there is no power except Yahweh. Yahweh created the heavens and the earth. 
He did it in six days, the heavens and the earth and all that in them is. Yes, in six days He did this. He created mankind in one day. He created all of this. And then the seventh day, He rested and He served mankind on the Sabbath day. He fed them, He taught them everything on the Sabbath day. He taught them His laws and said, Don't partake of this other way. You partake of this other way and dying, you're going to die. Well, sins have been building for 6,000 years. And in this generation, they have become their peak. Because the laws were done away with. As Isaiah 24 said, Because they transgressed the laws. Broken the everlasting covenant. And he said, Isaiah 24, verse 6, The earth is going to be burned and few men left. Now he warns you of this. He warns you in, in Matthew 24, this is the last generation. We're in it right now. And he says here in Micah 4, but in the last days it will come to pass that the promotion of the house of Yahweh will be established in the chief of the nation. The house of Yahweh in the last day. That's the last generation. The last generation started in 1934. I myself, helped to establish me and my brother, who is the other witness, two brothers. Read Isaiah 44 and you'll see two brothers there and their names. Yes, Yahweh names his two witnesses. Revelations 11 says, says, I will give to my two witnesses to testify these things. Yes, I will give to them, which means he's got to inspire them to do this. Well, here he says they're going to, they're, there's going to be a house established. His house is going to be established. Zechariah 4 and 5 shows that the two witnesses are the ones that do this. Called two olive trees. Yes, two branches. Two lampstands. That's shown in Revelations 11. If you go back to Zechariah 4 and 5, you'll see those two olive trees. Two lampstands. Two branches. One branch will branch off and will establish the house of Yahweh, Yahweh said. In those chapters, chapter 6, Yahshua will be the high priest over that house of Yahweh. He is. You know what he says? The gates of hell won't prevail against this house. Yes, in the last day's house, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I will establish my house and the chief of the nations and it will be raised above all congregations and all people will eventually flow to it. And many nations will come and say, come and let us go up to the promotion of Yahweh's house, to the house of the father of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths because the law will depart from Zion and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem and he will judge between many people rebuke strong nations that's what I'm doing right now I'm rebuking you for your sins I'm trying to get you to see your rebellion and what is causing what is causing the great crisis that we have in the world today the great sickness and disease you know we could live sickness free if you live sin free you'll live sickness free Yes, turn from your sin. You want to know why that your prayers aren't answered? You know, the Pope has been praying with all kinds of leaders for rain <laughs> and for peace. <laughs> you know why your prayers are not being answered? Read Isaiah 59, 1 and 2, and you will see why your prayers are not answered, Pope Francis. No, you're not going to have peace. You're going to have war. Great wars, many wars, continual wars. Soon you're going to have nuclear war and it will wipe out four-fifths of the earth's population and Rome will be burned. Yes, that's the message from Yahweh to the world and to the leader of the kings of the earth, the great city of Rome. May Yahweh bless your understanding.